So welcome, uh, I'm Mr. John from explainingmaps.com and we're here together to do another full paper. We're going to do paper uh, 43 from May, June 2018. And um, you're sitting there ready to do your exam and you probably will feel a little bit nervous, but don't worry because this is really a celebration for you to show all the things that you've learned. But while you're waiting, you're just going to remind yourself to round correctly if the final answer is not a whole or, or it's not um how do you say that it's not an exact answer that you have to round to three significant figures when it's um, an angle one decimal place okay and then the examiner will tell you to start so we are going to start and before you just dive into the first question have a quick flick through the paper so question one is about percentages and perhaps a ratio question and that is what you would expect from question one uh, I see some um, some interest questions there, so nothing unusual. If I go to question two, it's about graphing. I see a quadratic and an exponential. You're probably going to ask me to solve it graphically as well. So again, a very typical paper four question. Question three then. Oh, that's a scatter graph. Well, that doesn't occur a lot, but I'm pretty sure you can do really well in that question as well. So that is good histogram so maybe they will also ask me somewhere to calculate an estimate of the mean question four probability and uh, so again nothing unusual and then question five is about constructing those equations and then solving them yeah? so it's about algebra and again constructing your own equations question six um, looks like some trigonometry, some Pythagoras theorem, perhaps. I see some right angle triangles there. Um, 3D trig, so perfect, as expected. Okay, then question seven. Always looks a little bit intimidating, but that's those mensuration questions about cylinders in this case. And I see some cones and spheres. Hemisphere, fantastic. Question eight, um, matrices, so that is perfect. Uh, question 9, linear programming, and then we go to, well, it's a lot of questions. Question 10 is about functions, uh, composite functions, evaluating and inverse functions, and that's it. Okay, so really take that minute for yourself to flick through the paper before you start, so you have a, a rough idea what you are going to do in the next two and a half hours. Okay, so um, let's get started. And let's make sure, and we tell ourselves, let's make sure this is the best piece of work that we are able to do. So Rowena buys and sells clothes. She buys a jacket for $40 and sells it for $45.40. Calculate the percentage profit. And that's for three points. Well, a percentage profit or loss or increase, decrease is the change in value. So show that, the change in value divided by the original value. So in this case, it used to be the jacket, $40. And to turn that into a percentage, you times it by 100%. So that will be two points for writing that down, eh? showing the change, and then dividing it by the original times 100. And then we just get that third point for the correct answer. So make sure to plug it in your calculator properly, times 100 equals, and then it's 13 and a half percent fantastic really nice question to start with let's move on she sells so Rowena sells a dress for forty dollars and sixty cents after making a profit of twenty percent on the cost price calculate the cost price and again for three points should kind of inspire you to think this is reverse percentage so she gains a profit of twenty percent so this this price forty two dollars and sixty cents is 120% of the original price. So the original price, 100% plus 20% profit. So divided by 120 to go to 1%, and then you can times it by 100% to find the cost price. And you're just telling yourself that that cost price needs to be less than the $42.60, because that includes your profit, right? Times 100. So that is $35.00. And let's do two decimal places, by the way, uh, 50 cents. Okay. Moving on for two points. Uh, Sarah invests $500 for 15 years at a rate of 2% per year. Simple interest. Calculate the total 
interest that Sarah received. So that does not include her initial investment. Only the interest is what they are asking for. And it's simple interest. So I have $500. I divide that by 100%, times it by 2%. That is the amount of interest I get each year. But I don't do it for one year. I do it for 15 years. So I'll times that by 15 which will give me the total amount of interest. So 500 divided by 100 equals times two. So $10 per year for 10 years. Uh, sorry, am I correct? No, I think I made a silly mistake there. So 15 years, I timed it by 10. Come on, John, focus. I'll do it again. Divide by 100 times two. So $10 per year times 15, so $150 is the amount of interest that uh, Sarah will receive. Beautiful. Uh, turning the page already, and then we're going to talk about Thomas. And for three points, uh, Thomas has two cars. And the value today of one car is 21000 And the value of this car decreases exponentially by 18% per year. Calculate the value of the car after five years and give your answer correct to the nearest hundred dollars. So really put perhaps an explanation mark there that you don't forget to round it properly. So every year the price decreases by 18%. So the 21,000 after one year will be worth only 82%. Yeah, because why 82%? Because the hundred percent will be decreased by 18%, which is 82%. So 21,000 times 0 0.82 will give me the price of the car after one year. But it's not after one year, it's after five years. So again, I have to times it by 0 0.82, times by 0 0.82, times by 0 0.82, or easier and definitely quicker is to say times 0 0.82 to the power of five. All right. So while I work that out, I'll tell you, if you want to be rich, don't buy an expensive car because cars will cost you loads of money. And the true rich are rich because they don't have expensive cars. Uh, has some exceptions there, of course. Uh, but I'm wobbling now. Let me just focus on the mouse. I'm writing down all those decimals and I'm telling myself to the nearest hundred. So the hundred is the seven. The next one is an eight. So that seven goes up 7,000. 800. Beautiful question. But he has two cars, Thomas, and the value today of the other car is $15,000, and the value of this car increases exponentially by X percent per year. Never going to happen, okay? A car will never increase its value. Okay, but okay, that's a different discussion. After 12 years, the value of the car will be $42,190. Calculate the value of X. Well, this is how I do it. I mean, it's worth 15,000 now. Let me write that down. And normally I would times it by yeah, the percentage. I'm just gonna say X now, to the power uh, 12. And it's worth now 42,190. But I'm telling myself this X, yeah, because it increases, will give me an answer like 1.01, .01, for instance. That means 101% of the original. So that is an increase of 1%. Let's have a look at when we get the final answer, what I exactly mean with that. Let's work this out first. So X to the power 12 will be 42,190 divided by 15,000. So X will be the 12 roots of that. I'm going to grab my calculator and I say 42,190 divided by 15,000 equals the 12 roots of, oop, there we go, my answer equals, so as I said, it's 1.09 and then a lot of zeros. So that means that X is a hundred and 9% of the original uh, value, so that is an increase of 9%, or if you like, 9.00, correct to three significant figures. Beautiful. 
Uh, and if you're not sure what I'm doing, explaining maps.com, eh, you know, go to my website, check it out. Everything is for free. I will try to keep it like that. But then you need to go there. Okay, let's move on. Uh, graphs. So, 2 to the power x is an exponential function. Eh? x is in the exponents. And um, they give you a table of values. And some of those numbers are already, or some of those coordinates are already done for you. Eh? When x is 1, 2 to the power 1 is 2. That's correct. For instance, 3, 2 to the power 3 is 8. That's correct. Uh, you really should have a look at that table. Don't just answer the question straight away. Have a look first what's going on. 2 to the power 0, ladies and gentlemen, is 1. And 2 to the power 4, uh, you may need a calculator for this, that's fine. That's 2, 4, 8, 16. Uh, don't forget that, 16. There we go. So that's for two points. That's a lovely question. Those examiners are truly generous. They want you to do well. Don't forget that. 14 minus x squared is the is another function. It's a parabola, actually, yeah? a quadratic. Complete the table. And again, they give us three coordinates. Let's have a look at when x is 2. So 2 squared will be 4. So 14 minus 4 indeed is 10. Well done. Um, what about when x is 0? 0 squared is 0. 14 minus 0 will stay 14. And when x is 4... 4 squared is 16, um, so 14 minus 16 would be minus 2. Okay, now don't forget, especially if you have to do many of those coordinates, and if the functions are slightly more difficult, you have a table function. Uh, I never know where it is, but uh, yeah, the table function there. Uh, if you would use that, plug in your function, and then it will just give you all those coordinates. But I think for now it is quicker and easier just to find them yourself. And then they ask on the grid to draw the two functions for when x from 0 to 4. That's the domain. And luckily, the grid they give us also starts at 0 and finishes at 4. So we use a pencil. And this is still where a lot of students go wrong, plotting coordinates. So take care. Let's start with the exponential. When x is 0, y is 1. So 0, 1. And I have a good look at that skill, but that will be there. So you need a sharp pencil, eh? You need a sharp pencil. Um, when x is 1, y is 2. x is 1, y is 2. So please notice the different skill between the x, x axis compared to the y axis, eh? 2, 4. I'll hurry up a little bit. I can hear you think, come on, guy, hurry up, Mr. John. You're waffling too much. And 4... 16, there we go. And indeed, this is a beautiful exponential curve. It's similar to, let's say, my salary curve. Hopefully, not true, of course. Yeah, my salary curve. Now, I'm going to graph this to my best ability so you can also see it. So I hope it's still visible in the screen. Oh, that is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Okay, I'll just finish it for the sake of it. You can do a better job than this, but okay, it's good enough for now. Um, then the other one, by the way, this is for six points, eh? so you've got some time to do it properly. Um, but 0, 14, so 0, 14 over there, and 1, 13, or 1 exactly between 12 and 14 lies 13 over there. Uh, 2, 10, 2, 10, and you already can see that quadratic uh, forming, a half a quadratic, because the domain is from 0 to 4. Well, it's not a half quadratic, it's half a parabola. Uh, come on, hurry up. Uh, 2, 10, I've just done that one. 3, 5, 3. Oh, that's almost impossible to see. It's not a very good copy I made myself. And 4 minus 2 will be here. Now, I'm just going to check out. 3, 5, yeah, that's correct. Okay, and graphing that one, I'm just going to turn it upside down. So make sure to go through your coordinates, a smooth curve, and this is reasonable. I'm not very proud uh, of it, but it is good enough. Okay, six points. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for being so generous uh, to us. I'm going to now flip uh, the paper over because I'm sure the questions will be about the curves I've just drawn. Use your graphs indeed to solve the equation 
2 to the power x equals 12. This is for one point. So they're asking, when is that exponential? When is it 12? And I have to use my graph. So go to 12, yeah, and then make sure that you go to your exponential. Yeah, this is the exponential. So when is the y coordinate? When does it equal 12? So a dotted line, and then we go down. There we go. And again, I can barely read mine, but that is three. That is three and a half. So um, I'm going to say 3.6. Okay, but I can't see the little uh, squares there. But 3.6, I'm pretty sure that's going to be good enough. Then the question is, use your graphs to solve when is the exponential the same as your quadratic? So what is the point of intersection, ladies and gentlemen? That is over here. So if we go down and 2, oh, sorry, you can't see that. So 2.5, and um, I am going to say now 2.7, okay? 2.7 for my answer. And by the way, I'm doing this in red pen, but you make sure to do this in dark blue or black pen. All of it, right? Except for diagrams, you use a pencil. For the rest, dark blue and black. I'm using red because it just shows it a little bit clearer using this, um, you know, this equipment. Uh, moving on, for one point, on the grid, draw the line from point four to, that has a gradient of minus four. What a lovely question. Uh, I've never seen this one before. Draw a line from point 0.42 with a gradient of minus 4. So let's go to 4.2. So that is 4 horizontally and 2 up. There we go. So this point and then the line with a gradient of minus 4. Well, that is a line then going down. Minus 4, meaning if I now go one unit to the left, I should go 4 units up. Yeah, four units. So I am at two, so four units up, I should go to six. And then I draw that line, and I really should have a sharper pencil, but I don't. Okay? Uh, so my apologies, but here we are. Oh, it looks like a tangent, by the way, as well, over there. Um, complete the statement. Well... As if I have a magic ball, as if I have a magic ball where I can predict the future with, because it says the straight line is a tangent. By the way, all lines are straight, aren't they? I never understand why they say the straight line. Isn't every line straight? Okay, ask your teacher and tell me the answer. The straight line is a tangent to the graph of, that is that parabola, at the point. Now you see a tangent, it's a touch line, just touching it at the point to 10, to 10. Beautiful, um, I think I am going to make a new video to uh, continue with this paper, okay? So this is part one, and I hope to see you at part two, three, and four, where we um, solve this entire paper for Like and share this, guys, that would be really useful, because then I can reach more of your friends as well. All right, take care, and I'll see you in a minute.